Hello guys, today we're back looking at another part of our Mercedes Actros truck build. It was a cheap RC truck that we got on AliExpress, I think it was. And it came with this uh, trailer as well. Now, all the trailer does is tip. There's nothing else in it. It had two contacts here that uh, you gave power from the tractor unit. And that just uh, ran the motor until it hit the hard stops in the back here. And there must be some sort of slip clutch or something like that in the back that stops it breaking itself. So, what we're going to try and do, and we might get it all done in this video, is just add in a little control board that's going to drive our motor. Add some lights and change this so that it will fit with the other trucks I have, so the CQ Scania. Today's video is sponsored by PCBWay. They manufactured the PCB that you can see on screen now. And this is the motor driver board that we're going to use to raise and lower the bed of this trailer. And I used PCBWay for a long time before they were even a sponsor. And the service has always been good. The quality of the PCBs has been good. And the delivery is always very fast. So if you're working on a PCB design, make sure and check out PCB Waves website because there's always good deals to be got. For example, at the minute, there's a Christmas festival on and you can get discounts because of that. Well, the first thing we need to do anyway is take it apart because uh, we need to see what we can do about this part. And to see how much space we have in here to fit our wires and our control board, maybe a battery. So let's just start to take it apart. Okay, well we're in now and as you can see, there's nothing in this base piece at all. Just our little bar here. Hopefully that just pushes back out. It looks like it's press fit. Yeah. So that's that out of our way. So we need to replace that with something that our CQ uh, Scania can grip. Wiring wise, nothing in here as you'd expect. We have just a motor. The two wires just went straight to the motor. There's no switch, no nothing. You can see a little spring in there. So that's going to be part of the slip clutch mechanism. Maybe we can see that work. Well, you couldn't really see anything slipping there, but uh, I suppose you could probably see the shaft with the spring on it rotating while the rest of the mechanism uh, was held in place. As we were expecting, though it's not too much to tear down really, there's only the one motor. So what we're going to want to do now is add some control to our trailer. And we have plenty of space here to do it, so as you can see, there's nothing in this area. Massive space for a battery, massive space for controls. So what we're going to do is use one of our PCBs that we got uh, manufactured by PCBWay not so long ago. This PCB is for an MX116L a single motor driver. It's another one that I'm just kind of testing out. So we'll have to wire it up and see how it goes. Well, I tried to do another recording of uh, soldering a PCB in front of the camera and it did not go well. Uh, I spent probably about 10 minutes trying to get the solder off to the pins on this chip, so I would strongly advise not trying to solder around the camera from about a foot away from it, especially on something this small. But anyway, I got it cleaned up and hopefully it'll work when we actually power it up. But you can see here the little orange wire. If you remember from... Well, I'm assuming you've already seen the Mercedes Actros truck videos, but I suppose it's possible that this comes out first. I don't actually know how I'm going to edit all these. But the orange wire here is because I made a mistake when designing the board here. I designed it, well, I intended to design it to work with the version 4.1 and 4.2, which technically it does. But because I've picked a pin here that uh, varies between the two boards, I ended up on the version 4.1 it's not a PWM pin whereas it is on the version 4.2 so I just moved it one pin over with the orange wire Just uh, I just cut the trace and moved the wire over a little bodge wire 
and now it's on pin 6 and pin 6 is a PWM on both 4.1 and 4.2 so in the future boards if I make these again uh, I'll be swapping those pins around just to make sure that we're always on PWM on one of the pins on our motor driver so that's ready there I also uh, just put together this little switch here and I cut a little hole in the side of the, uh, the plastic on the trailer so I'll hot glue this in and this will be our connection to our battery it's going to be a 3.7 volt lipo battery and when I've that in we can uh, wire up our motor which is in the trailer and the switch to this little control board and we'll see how that's going to work out I'll also uh, drill four holes and mount this board in nice and securely to the uh, plastic body of the, uh, the trailer here just so that we can plug and unplug the controller nice and easily when we're when we're programming it all right so i have mounted the control board in here well actually the just the motor driver shield so far i have just hot glued a little switch in here so that let's just turn it on and off the little connector here is for the battery and that is hardwired to the connector at the front here so that means we can charge the battery with the switch in the off position it also means that if you have the switch in the off position you can power the tractor unit uh, without sending power to the lights if you wanted to I'm not sure why you'd want to do that but it's something you can do so that means we should be able to charge from the front the orange wire then uh, going to the yellow here that is the signal wire that's our UART uh, receive line that's going to be on our uh, control board and uh, you can see it going into the shield here um, I just I have only three bolts holding this in the uh, fourth one the threads just uh, stripped on the plastic bit so it's, it's no big deal I don't think it's really going to cause any issues it's fairly solid in there so what we can do to test this out is I have the control board from the tractor unit and the tractor unit uses a single motor driver board it's not this one but they're the same pin out so it doesn't really matter the code that's on this is set up for the tractor unit so the it's set up for the drive motor and the steering and everything else but you know the code doesn't know that this isn't a drive motor that it's a tipping trailer so it doesn't really matter we'll just plug this in and assuming the wiring works okay we should be able to just drive the motor up and down as if it was the drive motor on the tractor unit we have no signal so Yeah, we have a signal now so we are connected hopefully yep so as you can see our wiring is working perfectly our switch powered it up the control board was able to control the motor and everything's working fine so what I've left I have added an extra wire here that, that's for ground for the lights and then I have three wires one for the left indicator one for the right indicator and one for the brake lines so we'll be able to uh, connect up the lights I'm not sure how exactly I'm going to do it because they well they're, they're on this uh, wheel thing here so it's going to be a little bit tricky because the wires you know it's not like they're coming straight to a solid piece they're coming through this part to go to the next part you know i could just drill through here wire it into the wheel part but then we might not be able to get it back apart again if we solder the wires too tight so I'm just gonna have to try and figure out how we're going to do that without making it too difficult i'm not going to have this wireless so i guess that's an example of how you could make your trailer wireless if you wanted i don't really want to be using a uh, radio uh, to communicate between the tractor unit and the uh, trailer that might introduce delays and then the lights wouldn't be in sync which isn't really what I want if I just use the wire and hardwire it straight to the tractor unit the lights are going to be in sync within like microseconds I'd imagine so I'm not going to bother with a control board with the radio I'm just going to use the control board on its own with no radio and that should just work perfectly all the other trailers are like that so there's no reason why this shouldn't be any different 
I had thought about uh, taking a look at making this tip and angle a bit uh, higher, but when I actually compared it to the Smith Cargo Bull trailer, it's barely any lower than that trailer, unless the static version of the Cargo Bull trailer is for some reason not able to tip as far as the uh, Control 32 version. But that I don't know. But this doesn't tip much worse than that, so it'll do rightly. I'm not, not that bothered about it anyway. We're going to end up with a trailer with lights. Tips pretty simple. We've probably two or three hours into this, so I'm pretty happy with the result. We'll just get the lights sorted, and that should be that. Okay, guys, so what I've done here is... I've added in 1.8mm LEDs, I've done my best to keep the leads nice and short on the back here so they shouldn't uh, hit the tyres. What I have is a ground, a right indicator wire, a left indicator wire and a brake lights. And each of the positive wires has a resistor already built in. To mount this, I was trying to keep it so that this part and this part, you wouldn't have to disconnect them every time uh, you know, you wanted to take the base off. The problem was that before I modified it, this part here would cover over these screws. So there's four screws in total. That's what screws off part of the base. There's, there's a few more on the other end, but that kind of doesn't matter for the minute. In these corners, there was a piece piece of plastic that just covered over those screws, so you couldn't get them off. So all I did was cut a notch in each of those corners. I'll feed the wires through here and screw this piece back on. That'll hold that permanently on. We'll also be able to put the wheels on at that, I think. So with the wheels on, it still covers the screws. It's only five screws to take this off and that gets the wheels out of your way. So I don't think that's too bad. But it means that there's one less piece that we need to take apart. So this can stay permanently screwed to the uh, the top piece there. And that should leave things a little bit simpler. So I'll feed these wires through this section here and tighten all that up. And then we're going to have to connect them to our wires in the rear of the model here. So what I was thinking was to use just a couple of uh, DuPont connectors what I usually use whenever I'm connecting wires but I might just look and see if I left them long enough how difficult would it be to get the wires just packed into this space because then maybe we could just have the the rear part just hinge off if we ever needed access or maybe hinge off to the side and maybe that would be good enough to might be no need for a connector to disconnect it completely so i'll take a look at that and i'll try and figure out what the best option is okay i decided just to uh, make a kind of permanent connection on each of these wires i have it wired up now and i've uh, changed the code so hopefully you're able to see the rear lights here and on the tractor unit there uh, which just happens to be the scania because i just happen to have it here so if we put our hazards on okay i did hit the wrong button so that's our left indicator on the tractor unit and because the trailer's upside down this is the left indicator on the trailer so you can see there that they are in sequence that's what we wanted if we go right indicator we have the same that's working fine the tail lights are on on the trailer at the minute and um, that is seemingly unrelated to the tractor unit so there's the tail lights off on the tractor unit but they're on here so i have to make a slight change to the code because if you see the trailer it is currently dimming as we go forward so that's our tail lights dimming as if you were letting off the brakes that's the idea but we don't want the tail lights on all the time we only want them on when the lights are on on the tractor unit because it's kind of doing the same. Hopefully that's showing up on the on the camera. I'm not sure how clear it is. So that's the lights working anyway. We just need to make that one change to the tail lights. 
for the tipping angle then we do have speed control but the motor in this is so quick it's kind of making no difference anyway I suppose you have a little bit of speed control That's probably as slow as we can put it down. So you do have a bit of speed control, it's not too bad. So that's basically all the controls you would really need for this trailer, just control of the tipping angle and a couple of lights. That's pretty much it. So the last thing to do is to put some sort of a pin here that we can hook up with our normal uh, tractor units. And that'll be pretty much it done. We just screw everything back together and that's it really okay I took this little piece that used to be the contacts for the motor off the uh, the base here so that that's the front where the fifth wheel connects so I took that off and inside where the pin used to be the press fit pin uh, I have glued a, an M3 lock nut in there so the threaded part is towards the bottom and the nylon locking ring is at the top there then I took an M3 bolt I marked the length I needed it to be and cut it down to size I put two nuts on the threaded side and just uh, clamped it in the uh, drill press put it spinning and with a file just file down the treads at the top here so that they'll slide into the fifth wheel on the tractor unit without much issue so this is now pretty much the same dimensions as the little catch that's on the CQ cargo bull tip and trailer so this should work pretty good so now I'm just gonna see if gluing this in is gonna work or is this just gonna spin in here so I did leave it quite a while for the glue to set so it's probably been there for a few hours as it's catching in the nylon here it seems to be going all right Okay, well that seems to have worked pretty perfectly. Absolutely no problem there. That's good and tight. So we'll be able to screw this piece back in and we should be good to go then. Okay, so here's our little uh, connector pin, I guess, in position now. That worked out pretty perfectly, I think. We'll hook it up to the Scania R620 later and just test that it's working perfectly once we put it all back together. I've also made a change to the code, so I fixed the lights so they're not on all the time, the tail lights. And also, when you're using trailers like this, it can be very easy to disconnect it from your vehicle and then forget that you've left the power switch on. So to prevent that, I've put a bit of PWM on the motor. Not enough to make the motor spin, but enough to make it just make it a little buzzing noise so you'll hear that now it uh, happens every 10 seconds when the trailer doesn't receive a signal from the tractor unit so that was it all that is is PWM on the motor just for a short little pulse just enough to make a little humming noise that's audible so that's all the changes done to the trailer I think I can now just put it all back together and that's it, we have a new uh, trailer for our Arctic Glories. Okay, well, here's the trailer all back together now. It is working perfectly with the fifth wheel connection up there. Um, I have the lights on here, if I turn the lights off on the tractor unit, you see the tail lights go out. Lights on on the tractor unit, tail lights come on. When you drive forward, they dip slightly. I'm not sure how well that's appearing on the camera, but the tail lights are dipping. Uh, I'll turn those off. Then, of course, you have your indicators. Hopefully, you can see they're flashing in sync with the tractor unit. And obviously, the same on the other side, but you can't see the tractor unit. Then, our tipping. That's as high up as the trailer goes. If we compare it to the Schmidt Cargo Bull trailer, it's actually, actually not much difference there. They're pretty much the same tipping angle. The Schmidt Cargo Bull is slightly 
a higher angle so probably slightly better but actually it's not very much in it we have a little bit of speed control on our tipping speed so that's probably as slow as it'll go that's full speed and when you try to drive on you can hear the slip clutches working there So that seems to be a fine little trailer for probably not very heavy loads but it could be good for something like if you had some fake uh, arable products or something like that or if you even made some fake rocks you could have some uh, grey, some foam painted grey so it would be fairly light and it would probably pour out of this fairly easily. But that's the trailer working as we expected. I'll get it on the scenery at some stage and do a video. I'll probably try and fill it with uh, gravel and just see how heavy of a load can it actually tip and see how easy it is to uh, manoeuvre it around behind a truck. It'll probably be the R620 because I don't have the uh, Mercedes Actros finished yet. So we'll just have to see how it goes. The way I have this convert now, I can pull it behind anything. One of my tractors doesn't matter. All of them use the same connections and the lights are going to work the same, the tipping is going to work the same, everything will work with everything else. So that's pretty ideal for us. That's it for today, so I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks very much for watching. Thanks very much for watching guys. If you liked the video please hit the like button and if you don't want to miss out on the next video click the subscribe button below and get the bell on for notifications. A big thanks to all our patrons, sponsors and you guys buying the PCBs for your own projects. That all helps to support the channel and keep the content coming. And speaking of content, there should be links on the screen now to a few more videos if you want to keep watching. And if you go to the channel homepage, you'll see that there are plenty of playlists there to check out. But that's all I have for today, so I'll see you in the next video.